I like all of the recipes I make on this channel, and a lot of them are my favorite dishes, but today is a special day because the recipe I'm making today is, without a doubt, my favorite dish of all time. Since I was a child, through to now, into the future, will always be, has always been, the recipe that is closest to my heart. I'm making Hainanese chicken rice. So what is Hainanese chicken rice? My family on my dad's side is Hainanese from Hainan Island. And this is a dish that actually did not originate there. It did in some way. So there's a dish in Hainan called Wenchangji, which means Wenchang chicken from the town of Wenchang. It's a very specific type of chicken. And it's usually just boiled with some salt, and not even with ginger like we're gonna do here. But it was Hainanese people that left from Hainan Island that went down to Malaysia and Singapore through Southeast Asia that developed this dish that became famous around the world. Hainanese chicken rice is essentially made up of three parts. Very, very tender poached chicken, flavorful rice that's cooked in the chicken stock, and sauces to tie it all together. So, I'm gonna make all of those three things here today. Stick with me. Let's start with the chicken. The chicken itself is poached in essentially its own liquid. You know, MSG is a big part of Hainanese chicken rice in Southeast Asia, but you don't need to use it. If you're trying to avoid MSG, then just cook two chickens at once. The extra savouriness that you get from cooking two chickens with salt and of course all the spring onions and ginger and things will make up for that lack of savoury taste that you would all otherwise get from MSG and really, really make sure you season the stock well. So let's start doing that right now. We're going to start with some ginger. You don't need to peel the ginger here. I've got a nice hunk of it. Just cut it into a few pieces and drop it in my mortar and pestle. Just give the ginger a good crush to release its fragrance. Now, spring onion oil, I think, is a really important part of Hainanese chicken rice. So we're going to use kind of that portion of the spring onion for that. But these kind of off cuts off the end up here, we can add that into our stock, just add a little bit more flavor. The ginger as well, I'll fill that up with water. Put these aside for my sauces and get onto the chickens. Now the, the, the fat of the chicken is actually really important behind the chicken rice. It flavours everything. It flavours the chilli sauce, it flavours the rice, it flavours the soup that we're making over there as well. So inside the back of a chicken you'll find deposits of fat that you can pull out and render down to create some chicken oil. I haven't got a huge amount of chicken fat there, but that's okay. You know, you, if you're not gonna go out and buy chicken fat, especially for this dish, which quite often you can do, just add a bit of oil, it doesn't matter. You're still gonna flavor that oil with the chicken fat there, so it's gonna have a lot of flavor to it. Put this on a very low heat and let the chicken fat render down. Now I just wanna rub the skin of the chicken with a bit of salt on the skin in the cavity. You can rinse the salt off if you like, but it's not really all that important. Now one thing I think is really useful when you're making chicken rice is to get yourself some poultry hooks. They just go in underneath the wings of the chicken there and it allows you to move the chicken around. So you can actually take the chicken, plunge it into the water, fill the cavity with hot water and do all the kinds of things that you need to do. If you don't have poultry hooks, of course, you can easily do without. But one thing that's really useful about these is they help suspend the chicken off the base of the pot. If you get onto the base of the pot, sometimes the contact of the metal on the chicken can tear the skin. And the skin behind these chicken rice is really important. So let's take these little fellas, put them into the water. When the chickens go into the water, you want to move them up and down a few times just to change the liquid inside the cavity. If the liquid goes into the cavity, it will cool down really quickly. So by sort of plunging the chickens up and down like a tea bag, you change that liquid and make sure that the heat remains constant all the way through. Now the chicken's cooking. Stage two, the condiments. I'm making three different condiments to go with the chicken rice, frankly, because they're the best ones. Sometimes you see it drizzled with a thick black sauce over the top, but in my family, we don't do that. We use a kind of a mixture of sesame oil and soy sauce and the chicken stock that we're making to make a dressing to go over the top of it. Along with that, there's two more. Obviously, the ginger and garlic chili sauce that is very, very popular with Hainanese chicken rice. And I'm gonna show you how my family makes that. And then also a spring onion oil, a kind of a Cantonese condiment, often served with Cantonese barbecue, poached chicken, that kind of thing. It goes fantastically with Hainanese chicken rice. The first step to that is my spring onions. Just cut off the roots and then finally slice the rest of it. Now that can go into the mortar and pestle. 
and now a really good amount of grated ginger to go in with the spring onion. Now this ginger and spring onion paste is actually a flavoured oil, so I want to add some oil into this. But to really draw out the flavour, I'm going to heat the oil up to its smoking point first. While the oil's heating, I'll add some salt to this and just give it a light pound. The oil's smoking now, so it goes straight over the ginger and spring onion. As soon as the oil hits that, the fragrance is just absolutely incredible. Now that is condiment number one. Clean all of this up and get on to number two. Now for the chili sauce, it's actually a similar process to the ginger and spring onion oil, but just instead of oil, we're using the stock that we make from our chicken. So a good whack of ginger first. When my grandma makes this dish, this chili sauce is the most important part. And I swear it is because it does add so much flavour to every single mouthful. But many of the hawker stalls you go to, the chili sauce will just be blended up together in a nice strong blender. Now there's nothing too much really wrong with that, but you get so much more flavour if you pound it in a mortar and pestle. On the flip side of that, of course, the mortar and pestle is very, very time consuming. So I find that the best kind of marriage of both worlds is a great the ginger and garlic and chilli into your mortar and pestle and then pound it in there. Now this is starting to look like the right colour and consistency so I just need to season it with some salt, some sugar too. Because this should be quite a, a sweet chilli sauce, not, not cloyingly sweet, but it should have this nice sort of sweet sour tang that offsets the more savoury chicken and spring onion oil. Now to finish this off, I just need to dilute this down with some of the stock that we're poaching the chicken in. If you taste this poaching liquid, it's delicious. It's got like the taste of a strong chicken soup and that's exactly what we need because this is the most important part. You know, the soup will make your chilli taste good, it'll make your chicken taste good, it'll make your rice taste good. And so this broth, this simple little nearly completely clear soup, is actually the secret to a good Hainanese chicken rice. Give that a really good stir, a squeeze of lemon, just for some freshness at the end there. Mm, and that's exactly how it's supposed to taste. Sweet, sour, savoury, with that bite of chilli and the fragrance of ginger and garlic as well. Now our third sauce is very, very simple. Just some of our flavorful chicken soup mixed together with some soy sauce and sesame oil. So the chicken's nearly ready to come out now. So you're probably wondering what I'm doing with this little trestle here. This is gonna hang the chickens because hanging the chicken's quite an important part. It allows the chicken to relax. It also allows you to, to rub it and allow it to cool down as well. I'm going to fill up the sink with lots and lots of very cold water, add ice to that because cooling the chicken down really, really quickly is going to give me that lovely gelatinous skin that Hainanese chicken rice is so famous for. One of the things with cooling down the chickens, my recipe for Hainanese chicken rice is kind of a mishmash of how my grandmother makes it, how my uncle makes it and how the various people that I've come across make it. My uncle ran a chicken rice store in Singapore for nearly 40 years and he always used to say, it's a waste of time to spend so much effort on your stock if you're just going to plunge your chicken into unseasoned water. So his top tip was always, you need to really salt the water that you're cooling the chicken down in and I swear it makes a huge difference. I'm just rubbing the chickens all over, I've got clean hands and rubbing them with sesame oil. That will really give the skin a lovely colour and season it and also stop it from drying out too much as it hangs here. So our three sauces are made, our chicken is poached and hanging and the only thing left to do is to make the centrepiece of this whole dish, the chicken rice itself. Now, I don't think I've forgotten about the chicken oil that I've rendered over back there on the stove. I'm gonna flavor that with a bit of shallot or onion, some garlic as well. We'll just pound all of these together and I'll infuse that into the chicken oil that we've got going over there. And so you can kind of see how the whole dish comes together. You've got the ginger infused chicken broth that we cook chicken in and then we've got this garlic and onion that's going into the chicken oil that's on the stove there. And when it comes together, that is the complete flavor of the Hainanese chicken rice.
That looks great now. In the past, I used to do the thing where you fry the uncooked rice in the oil, and you can still do that, and sometimes I still do. But I actually find this technique that was taught to me by my uncle to be a little bit easier. It gives you a nice coating of all of these flavors around the rice as it cooks without the difficulty of having to fry it all together. Now all I need to add is the chicken soup to go over the top of the rice. Just a touch of extra salt to season the rice. I don't need too much because, of course, the soup is salted and seasoned itself. And the very, very last ingredient, some pandan leaves. They've got a lovely toasty aroma. Tie those in a knot, drop them in, and then just give it a little bit of a stir to mix it all through. Now I'm using a rice cooker for this, but absolutely you don't have to. You can just use whatever method of cooking rice that you would normally use. The microwave, the stove, whatever. I just happen to find a rice cooker to be the easiest. And then, when the rice is cooked, all we've got to do is chop the chicken, serve it with the rice, the condiments, a bit of the soup, and that is a classic Hainanese chicken rice, my favourite dish of all time.